What would be something that is bad to stack? What would you want to avoid? Well, I'll tell you what, there's gonna be a few hundred coin dealers out here who will hate me even more after this video, but let's just level with the viewers. Buy your gold and silver online from SD Bullion. New customers get gold or silver at spot by visiting sdbullion.com slash new. Hey, good morning, Adrian. Good to see you. Harry. Silver Dragons. Good morning. Welcome back. Where is the rest of the crew? Well, if you look outside, you see snow drifts in the parking lot and yes. everything is an ice sheet around Portland. So in the neighborhoods anyway, it's very hard to get out. And right now, only the thoroughfares are clear. So the only crazy enough guys to be here are Adrian and you, and of course me. <laughs> but we're here safely, and um, I think we can do this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so they're, they're having a snow day, I guess. A snow morning, anyway. <laughs> yeah. So did you guys have to close at all during the storm? We were closed on Saturday. We were open part of the day on Tuesday, and then closed again yesterday. So this is Thursday morning, and we're hoping to be back in business. Yeah, well, hopefully people uh, will make their way down and see all the great stuff you guys have here in the shop. We got, uh, still got some gold crew grands, looks like. Yes, lots of silver. Yeah, a lot of silver. Got and the carded nadir bars once again, which have been very popular. A little bit more of a premium in the, than the raw bars, but people like the security of that uh, the serial number in the card. So we're looking at some of the stuff that would be good to stack, you know, silver rounds, silver eagles, silver bars. Maples, don't forget maples. Maples, absolutely. From the last video. But what would be something that is bad to stack? What would you want to avoid? Well, I'll tell you what, there's gonna be a few hundred coin dealers out here who will hate me even more after this video, but let's just level with the viewers. I'm gonna have Adrian start out with some of the the more commonly seen things. Okay, so what do we got here? Yeah, so we've got some more nickels here that are 35% silver. This is a US mint nickel that was made during World War II, 40, right? 42 to 45, so halfway through 42, they started making them out of silver uh, for the war effort to use nickel, you know, as a strategic metal for weapons and, and so on. Um, so yeah, from 42 to 45, these were made um, in 35% silver and um, you know, the melt value on these is about a dollar twenty-seven each. Okay. Um, but you know, when it comes time to selling them, you know, there's there's quite a bit of a spread. Yeah, I'm most saying. cone dealers are going to give you quite a bit less than a dollar for those. Really? Yes. So not even not even spot. Oh, not even, not even close. I mean, do you think like coin shops would be buying for half of spot or maybe better? Maybe less than half on these. Really? If you recall an earlier video we did about things refiners hate, this is one of them because. Anything less than 80% silver has way too much waste mm -hmm. and you'll get, you know, maybe 60% on the melt from the refiner mm -hmm. because of all the waste. So I'm not saying they're not fun to collect and if you get one and change, it's a piece of silver for a nickel. But the fact of the matter is for stacking purposes, it's not a good move. Another one would be these, uh, the Canadian 80% silver up to about 1967 and even worse, the Canadian 50% silver found in 1967 and part of 1968. Again, you're gonna be able to buy it at or near spot, but when you go to sell it, you'll get a large percentage below spot. Wow, so it's just not as desirable to the coin shops. Yeah, because you remember, a coin shop has to buy this with the eye towards what are we going to do with it. Right. And with all the options with constitutional U.S. silver, silver rounds and bars that have really tight spreads on the, on the buy and sell, this stuff becomes kind of a hassle to sell. It's fun to collect. Again, you know, don't mix up collecting and stacking. But to stack something that's 35% silver or 50% or even 80% silver, is not a good move when you go to resell it. And then what is this one here, Adrian? So these are 40% half. So these were uh, minted from 1965 to 1970. Okay. And like I said, they contain 40% silver. Um, and again, these melt for about $3.35. But then again, kind of like the war nickel, when it comes time to sell these or what we do with them, you know, sometimes end up selling them under, under melt. So basically the different coins that are lower percentages of silver, less than sterling for example these are not as desirable and don't really 
sell back for very much. Exactly. I personally stacked the heck out of 80% silver long before I had the coin shop, but you have to have an eye towards disposing of it down the road. Coin dealers will pay far less than spot on that, and if you think you might need it for barter someday, it's going to be a harder one to explain than constitutional or the, the three or four nines fine silver rounds that are out there. And the other thing to consider is that the spread is important. If you're buying uh, rounds, let's say, for $2 over spot, your break-even point is spot going up $2 right. an ounce. If you buy something that a dealer is going to give you, say, 60% of, silver would have to go maybe from 23 to $30 before you break even. Yeah. So you can break even, but you're going to have a lot longer wait. You know, speaking of uh, weight, <laughs> yeah. a different way to say the word, these actually take up a lot of room in your safe as well because the percentage of silver is so low. And, you know, a lot of people, they, they have limited space. Their safe is only so big. Yes. So silver already takes up a lot of space, but when you get something that's 35% silver or 40% silver, I mean, it's just, it, it's ridiculous. Yeah, and well, that's kind of the case with all silver, but far more greater a problem is it with this sort of thing. Yeah. If I could just address another couple areas where you probably ought to avoid stacking mm -hmm. would be, first of all, the old Franklin Mint coins and metals and there were some other ones like the Highland Mint was another one that did a lot of this. The vast majority of these products that they sold, although beautifully designed and well struck, are done in sterling silver. Mm, okay. And not only are they done in sterling silver, which is not a terrible thing in and of itself, but they're done at odd weights. Their idea back in the late 60s through the 70s was not to come out with some one ounce or two ounce or some even numbered uh, amount of silver. They were, you know, they could be 24 grams or they could be 36 grams. They had more to do with the design that they were trying to achieve, maybe the profit margin they were trying to achieve, and without any regard to uh, even numbers. Not only that, they never say what the weight is on them. So not only do you have to know that it's sterling silver, it's not pure silver, but then you have to do the conversion of the weird weights on these. Correct. Although these aren't in their natural state, these usually come in albums that weathered very poorly over time. Mm. And so we break them out of there when we buy collections of this. And this is gonna go to the refiner. Really? Yeah, and bear in mind too, our refiner locally here pays 90% of melt for these. So just using logic, if, if the dealer's only gonna get 90%, you're gonna get something well below melt when you sell this. Yeah. Now, if you inherited some of this and there's no cost to you, maybe the best market is to go to a dealer, but I would not go out of my way to find this stuff. Right, so if you see it maybe at a coin shop or a show or wherever, and it's kind of you know close to spot and you're thinking oh i'm getting a good deal maybe you're not getting that great of a deal because again the spread is not in your favor unless you just want to wait it out and you don't you have a, enormous amounts of room to stack this and time is not a problem then you probably can pick them up even below spot as you buy it mm -hmm. this is the other weird thing with this too if you think about it this is sterling silver right so it's 92 and a half percent pure mm-hmm but then you have people that stack 90% silver, right? So it's a lower purity. Yeah. So on one hand, you know, it's higher purity silver, but the demand is just not there for it. Right. But, but see, uh, a U.S. dime that's 90%, at least it has going for it the fact that it's recognizable as a U.S. dime. Right. These are just kind of arbitrary. What are these? Yep. Yeah. These are blanks. <laughs> yeah. Even, even an experienced coin dealer would have to unless they know that particular Franklin Mint set, gonna have to break it out, weigh it, and do the math because there was no consistency from one series to another from the Franklin Mint or any of the other competitors they had. And along that same line of thinking would be sterling silver flatware and also serving trays and, and candelabras and things, all kinds of problems with those. Sterling silver spoons and forks and so forth is really the same idea as, as these coins. Good silver, sterling silver, but what does it weigh? What's the math on this? Does someone believe it's sterling when you go to sell it? Now they've got to test it. Again, unless you got it in inheritance, which frankly most of these people who sell to us did, this sort of thing is not my first stop for a stacker. 
The other problem that I see with sterling is sometimes people have a trouble differentiating if it's plated in sterling or yes. if it's solid sterling. Yes. So they'll think they're getting a solid sterling silver piece, but really there's like no silver in it at all. Or or just a light, a light, very light uh, coating of silver and plate. Sterling silver flatware, unless it's very old and antiques, you know, from Europe, it says sterling on it. Right. Um, if it says William Rogers or um, some of the other brand names. Or if they say silver on it too. If it says silver, it'll be more than likely silver plate. Yes. Mm. If it's sterling, it's gonna say sterling. Yeah. Um, things, there are terms like German silver or nickel silver. These are all things that are just either no silver or plated, um, but not sterling. But I'm talking about even sterling itself. Unless you get it literally for nothing, stacking this is a big mistake. You're gonna have a long wait on the break even. Going back to what you said, like how much room these things take, right? Oh yeah, that's gonna fill up your safe real fast. Exactly, so even us, when we put this to the side to put it away for the refiner, we run out of room with the sterling silver pretty quickly, so. So all of this stuff here just goes to the refiner when it comes in the shop? 100% going to the refiner, Wow. Yes. I think probably the pillars of stacking in America anyway, they are gonna be your 90% junk silver, constitutional silver, really, really great option. But other than that, you really want the silver coins, silver bars, and silver rounds. Those are the best things to be stacking. Yeah, I mean, we're talking financial best things to be stacking. I gotta tell you though, some of this is fun and I had a lot of fun with it. There was a channel years ago on the YouTube about a guy who stacked nothing but this sort of thing. And yeah. he would have these videos where he'd fill a sterling pitcher with these kind of coins or silver shot or or those kind of nickels. And he would have a tea party and he'd, he'd <laughs> pour into sterling cups from the sterling pitcher, this kind of stuff. And it was a blast to watch. Yeah. And it kind of incentivized a lot of us. Oh, I'm gonna stack some of that too. So there's fun and then there's sound financial thinking. Mm -hmm. If this is fun for you, by all means have at it. Yeah. But if you're doing it because you want to return down the road or you think you might need it for barter, it's not a good way to go. Yeah. And, and don't get us wrong. If you're able to buy this right, I mean, by all means, right? Sure. Go for it. But if, if you're paying melt for this kind of stuff, just be cautious. All right. Well, I really appreciate the wisdom, Harry. Yeah, of course. It's always a pleasure to share with you. Yeah, great to see you. You too. Great to see you, Adrian. Thank you. Be safe out there. Yeah, thanks. You too.